Hi there, I wanted to go over today one of the instruments I built which is not really an instrument but uh, what we call a isolated power supply which is useful in any lab um, for testing unknown equipment or in some cases you want to power up something gradually uh, slowly from uh, 0 to 120 volts or in my case I can do it also for 0, zero to 240 volts for 240 volt equipment so this one has some features that are useful. Um, I've seen many um, uh, hobbyists uh, develop or build such things for their own use. And this one is something I built uh, out of necessity. So I'm going to show you what this one does and um, we'll go over some of the features it has. So um, essentially um, when you test any equipment that um, that you don't know much about that is maybe you may have bought it on eBay or you may have acquired it from somewhere or maybe just some old piece of equipment lying around in your own house uh, when you power on something and directly connect it to the mains 120 volts or 240 volts as the case may be you risk um, in the case of uh, unused equipment or things that have been sitting long uh, idle for a long time you risk blowing up some stuff in there uh, the reason is that you could have some insulation that is worn out or you could have um, some shorts and some capacitors in the, on the main supply or various other faults that could have developed over time. So you want to avoid uh, blowing the house fuse or worse, uh, starting a fire or you know some shocking yourself, whatever. So a lot of reasons why you want to be careful with uh, such equipment or any equipment if you're unsure about its uh, functionality. So what this does is it's got a transformer which um, basically is a one-to-one -one transformer. Uh, it's not an auto transformer. Although in this particular case I have an auto transformer driving a one-to-one -one transformer which creates the isolation between the house mains and the load. In an auto transformer one of the windings is connected to neutral and the other winding is uh, is basically um, uh, adjusted uh, down or up depending on the turns ratio to get uh, the live uh, into the load uh, but the problem is you know, the neutral is still common and so if any shorts occur uh, to neutral you're going to have a huge current or you're going to shock yourself if it's touching the chassis and there's no earth ground for it. So uh, the isolation transformer basically the one-to-one the -one transformer in, in this particular piece of equipment would um, isolate there's no such thing as a neutral or live uh, in an isolated uh, side of the transformer because it's completely floating as, as with respect to any potentials with respect to either the live or the neutral except for some capacitance between the windings which is uh, typically quite small and so there's not chance of any current going through that. In this uh, piece of uh, gear that I built, uh, I put in two transformers, um, although I could have used one but I didn't at that time have two, uh, I mean I have one that could do both so I decided to uh, use two transformers, one for the 120 volt isolation and one for the 240 volt isolation. The, there's also a variac as you can see in the front which allows me to adjust the voltage from 0 to about 130 or something um, which then drives both the 1 to 1 and the 1 to 2 transformer so both the output windings of these two transformers um, are basically isolated from the house main supply um, so the other feature I put in here was uh, a current limiting feature. So there are three bulbs as you can see over here which are kind of uh, recessed inside this thing but they light up when you uh, have a short or something. Um, so I can uh, introduce series bulbs in with the one of the windings, output windings of the, I'm sorry, I can introduce a load on only on the 120 volt uh, windings. Um, so basically, um, typically since I only test one to mostly 120 volt equipment, I can um, turn on uh, a bunch of bulbs in parallel. So if I have all three of these switches up, it would mean that I have three bulbs, 40 watt bulbs in parallel. 
effectively making this like a 13.3 watt bulb in series with whatever load is there. If I only turn on one of these, uh, either one, any of, of these, I would get a 40 watt bulb in series. Uh, you can calculate the resistance of that uh, particular bulb. And so if there's a dead short on the load, um, the current is basically limited by the 40 watt bulb. So when I'm first turning on any uh, unknown equipment, I would first, of course, turn on one of these switches and then I would raise the supply and if I see something that the voltage doesn't rise or this current starts to go up, I would uh, immediately stop the test and uh, debug the equipment. So that is uh, one way and then if you think it's looking okay, you can start turning on more loads. Of course, these three together will not be able to drive a real load, uh, even a 40, 50 watt load because this is already a 40 watt or 13 watt uh, bulb in series. So it's going to only get a fraction of the voltage that it needs. In that case, I can bypass all of these three switches using this main switch here. It's a bypass switch, which bypasses all these bulbs. And so you get the full voltage that you apply uh, on this meter to the load. And the current that is indicated is the, is the current in that supply, the 120 volt supply. So um, the other thing is um, I do have also a 120, uh, 240 volt supply. This one is not protected uh, in terms of the current limiting, but it does have isolation. So you can still do the isolation test. That is if you connect one of the leads accidentally to, to neutral or to earth or something from the output side of that transformer, you are not going to see any current coming out. So I will demonstrate at least uh, on the 120 volt side how that works. So this is the right side of the, of the box and you can see there are some outputs and some other DC stuff in there. So let me describe them. The main one is the 120 volt output which I was talking about, AC. There's also the 240 volts, uh, which can take in the larger plugs from Europe or Asia and so on. And uh, it allows you to try different equipment from other countries if you want to. And also added a um, DC uh, output, um, which is basically a crude uh, DC supply that I just wanted to have on this instrument since I have a lot of transformers inside and I can just use, um, you know, uh, potentially a uh, simple DC supply with some limited drive capability. I'll show that a little bit at the end. Going, Looking inside this thing, you can see uh, it's a bit cramped in here. So um, the red um, circular thing is the Variac, which you know I just pulled out of, uh, bought it on eBay for $30, $40, I believe. It's a 500 watt uh, VA. Uh, variable transformer which of course doesn't give you any protection as far as isolation but allows me to vary the voltage this uh, variac drives two transformers the one the big one at the back is the 120 volt uh, transformer one to one that's 500 watts uh, VA and um, the one on the right is a 240 volt step up uh, can also do I believe uh, 440 volts, but I'm not, uh, I think the windings can be used that way, but uh, I just use it as a one to two up, trans uh, step up. So that's what it is. Um, down here are the bulbs and uh, the, the meter connections. And um, on the right side and just on top above this um, transformer is another small transformer as you can see below. That transformer is a 120 or 240 volts to to a 24 volt transformer, which is used to drive this board on top, the red board that is the DC supply. And DC that DC supply can go up to I believe around 20 volts and uh, provide two amps of current, which is uh, nice to have uh, just as a additional power supply for DC testing. And um, Everything here was uh, just, I built it out, out of a junction, one of the huge junction boxes. It's extremely heavy, this thing weighs, I think, around 50 to 55 pounds, the whole thing, 20, 25 kilograms. So it is a heavy piece of equipment, I mean, it, but it's uh, pretty robust and it's, I've tested it, um, even taken one kilowatt momentarily out of it. So 
Uh, the am a meter can go up to like 10 amps, but typically I would run it not more than 4 or 5 amps. The meter on the left can be switched to either a 240 volt or 120 volts, so I can use that. And the meter below is a digital meter that um, only looks at the 120 volt supply. And it gives a total power on the 120 volt um, supply. This is the main switch. This is the 120 volt switch uh, for the transformer. This is a 240 volt output uh, enable. The, this is the bypass limit for the 120 volt supply. And these are the three individual uh, controls for the bulbs, which are each 40 watts. Uh, the small ones you can see in there. The Variac, uh, this is the turn on on off switch for the DC supply. And I have a DC voltmeter and a crude um, ammeter, which I built uh, using uh, I, uh, instrumentation amplifier it doesn't it's not very accurate unfortunately because of the offsets in the uh, in that particular amplifier it's not uh, been designed to well it's just a crude uh, reading of the amps so at least i would know if there's a dead shot on the load or something but it'll won't be accurate except in certain range uh, voltages so occurrence so anyway that's uh, the whole thing so next i will uh, First thing I would like to demonstrate is probably uh, just a simple load test on the 120 volts using this 200 watt bulb and then I will demonstrate the current limiting features and then also an isolation test. So right now I hooked up the 120 volts supply to the bulb and uh, so I'll turn it on and see how, how, how that um, see how that works. So main switch is on. This voltage is at um, Variac is at zero. All switches are off. So I'm going to turn on the one of the limiting current switches. Turn on the main supply and uh, 120 volt uh, now supply is on. So as I increase this one, you will see the bulb barely glowing. Okay, and um, as I increase this, it's probably going to start limiting. As you can see, this bulb inside is on, so it's not able to draw the full current. And this voltage over here on the mains is not changing much either. So, it's basically current limiting it. Uh, no matter what I do, it's not going to be able to light up this bulb. If I turn on another switch, I'm decreasing the resistance further. So, two of the bulbs have now lit up. Um, and uh, it's still barely on so the supply voltage is now barely uh, 10 or volts 10 volts that means it's uh, this is a 200 watt bulb so you can imagine the resistance of this bulb is five times less than what i have around here and if i turn on the third switch finally um, it's coming up um, sorry this is the on the wrong meter so it's about 72 volts even with all the three bulbs turned on and this is uh, Providing around 35 watts, I mean, it's not really what it should be doing. So, so with this turned on fully, you can see it's drawing the full load, 200 watts. And that's what you expect uh, once you bypass all the switches. So that's basically how you would test something. You would basically start off with uh, two of these switches off, one on, and then raise the supply, and if things look good, you keep raising it, turn on more switches, and finally bypass the whole thing. So that uh, shows you the, the main uh, Variac part of it, along with the current limiting feature. Next, um, I'll show you the um, isolation part of it. So the next one is going to be this isolation test. So what I have is a, another plug which is coming off the main supply. This is not isolated. I'm just going to show you that this bulb will actually light up when I connect it. So there you go. It's fully powered, 120 volts. So what I'm going to do is connect one of these one of these um, terminals into the my um, isolation supply, and then the other one into one of these 
into this one's either live or neutral and if there's a any kind of current path the bulb should light up or there should be some current flow in the in the variac or in the in the isolation transformer uh, itself so go back to 120 volts i'm going to keep it at just the current limit to be safe for now and uh, raise it to all the way to 120 volts there's no load right now on that so it's going to go all the way to 120 so i'm going to plug in into one of these outlets and the other one i'm going to plug in into one of these spins of the regular main supply and if there's any kind of a path to cook to ground or to neutral it should um, immediately light up or show something so i plugged into the live or neutral there's nothing going on as you can see it's isolated if there were a path it would show some current or it would light up partially anyway and the other terminal same thing nothing and if connected to to earth nothing so basically this is completely isolated look at all these terminals so that's basically the advantage of this thing you, you are especially if you're testing a scope or some other instrument that we have a common ground connection to neutral or uh, something like that and if you connect a, a piece of equipment that has got a floating a high voltage on one of these it's one of its terminals because it's shorted internally you could uh, send a huge current into the scope uh, and potentially blow the input stage or blow up something else so uh, that's one of the benefits of using an isolation transformer where the scope is uh, completely um, uh, isolated from the mains so any anything that is connected to the mains uh, will not see a path to ground through the scope either to its ground or uh, any other uh, terminal in the scope so that's basically the function of an isolation transformer so the two functions that I have is the isolation as well as the current limiting with the variac so uh, for most equipment that are of a dubious nature you can um, pretty much test them here before you put them onto the mains directly so that you don't blow up stuff, blow up stuff. so hopefully this uh, gives you some ideas on building something similar and uh, uh, keep yourself safe from uh, uh, blowing up equipment and uh, hurting yourself. Thank you for watching. See you next time.